Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, this is sort of in the series on the CW Flea Transmitter. If you haven't watched that video, um, I've linked the first two videos in the description below. You can go check that out and see what we're talking about here. So it's been a long couple of weeks. Um, I've had a lot of frustrating days and been chasing my tail, uh, chasing a wild goose. <laughs> uh, and I thought that I'd just do a quick video as a cautionary tale to other people. So for this transmitter project, now it's built using an Arduino and an SI5351 breakout board, which is the uh, VFO uh, in this transmitter. And uh, I, I, I thought, you know, people that are going to build this project, they're probably going to go to Amazon, they're going to search for the parts, click buy it, and, and, you know, be done. And so I thought I'd go down that path and, uh, and get the parts that you're going to get through Amazon. Now, with the uh, 5351 breakout board, in the schematic, I recommend the Adafruit or EtherKit board. But on Amazon, there's some pretty tempting deals, and one that I found was uh, three of them for only $15. Now, a single board from Adafruit, I think, was around $10 or $11 for a single one, and here I could get three for $15, and I thought, you know, it, that, that was appealing to me, so it's probably going to be appealing to other people. So that's what I bought. Well, um, I ran into problems. Now, I shot a couple of video clips, so let me run those for you, and then I'll come back and we'll sum up. Apologies in advance for the cell phone video. I'm being lazy because I've been very frustrated, and I've made a breakthrough, and I wanted to show it to you guys. So I have, for the past couple of weeks been fiddling around with breadboarding the transmitter, the flea. You can see it there on the breadboard. I'm going to try to move and pan slowly here so I don't make people too dizzy. And I have been chasing my tail. It's been very, very frustrating. So first off, I've got the board powered up. Uh, the Arduino is there. You can see its lights are on. The SI5351 breakout board is there. I've got my code key hooked up over here so I can key down to turn on the uh, clock generator and get an output. And I've got the oscilloscope hooked up to it. And if I key down, we get a signal. Or what looks like a signal. It's not very stable. You can see it's kind of... Let me stop that. You can see it's kind of rounded and it dances around a little bit. That's not what I'd expect to see out of this thing. Now, I have the Air Spy sitting here, and I've got a little piece of wire coming out of it that's just in the vicinity of the circuit over here. And uh, looking over here, let me, uh, there we go. Over here, I've got GQRX running, and we're seeing all kinds of noise. These bands of noise are the inverter. I'm running off the inverter, so it generates. That's the kind of noise inverters generate. Garbage! But when I key down... Okay. Mostly just broadband hash. A couple of noisy-looking things over here. Um, garbage. I'm not getting signals that I should be seeing. I should be... Seeing a pretty solid, I should be seeing a pretty solid um, signal and some harmonics because it's a square wave, right? But that's not what I'm seeing. And this has been driving me nuts. So let's uh, take a closer look at things. Okay, I'm trying to get a camera angle here that lets me get, get you guys in here and I can still look through the lens and see what I'm doing. Let me get the probe out of here for a moment. This board, this SI5351 breakout board, uh, I ordered this through Amazon. Now, I knew that when people built this project, they were going to go to Amazon to buy parts and just click on things and take what they can get. And these came in a three-pack, really cheap, and they're from Elegoo, which is a Chinese manufacturer of parts and components. 
Uh, for example, I also got the uh, Nanos from Elegoo. And uh, they're working fine. Uh, I've bought these Nano clones before, and I've never had any trouble with them, but I'm always suspicious of the clone parts, you know, because they're going to be put together with whatever the cheapest thing that they can get is. And this little breakout board looks fine. It's got the 25 megahertz crystal on it. And it's got text on it there, you know, clock, clock generator SI53518, well, 5351, 8 kilohertz, 160 megahertz, yada, yada, yada. It's got the level converters, so it uh, can take 5 volts in. And uh, over here it says 25 megahertz crystal, and it's got all the right components. But um, I can't get it to work. I can't get a signal out of it. I cannot get a clean signal out of this board. Perhaps there's something different about it, and it needs a different library in the Arduino uh, IDE. I did a little looking, but I didn't find anything. And I got three of these, and I've tried two of them, and they behave the same. Just a big broad band of hash noise on the receiver and a weird kind of unstable signal. So... I went ahead and bought this board from Adafruit. Now, I've purchased boards from Adafruit before. Never had trouble with them. I've used one of these, in fact, in my 630 meter transmitter. So, again, it looks the same. It looks like all the same components. Let's plug it in. Line the pins up right. Yep. And I'll hook the scope probe back up. All right, we'll power it up and turn off the two meter rig. It's so much noise in here now, it's picking all kinds of garbage up. Oh yeah, all right, let me put this wire back in the connector on the receiver. Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. That's weird. The frequency is weird. Does that sound uh, better? <laughs> All right, let me grab my cell phone and we'll take another look at the uh, setup here. But I can tell you right now, it's working. Okay, we're back on the cell phone. First off, let's look at the scope. So I'll key down. Look at that. Now that's what I'd expect to see from a square wave going through the scope probe. The scope probe's not terminated, but it's a nice, clean square wave. The scope's locking onto it. It's steady. And it says that it's at 13.9689 megahertz. I might have to do some compensation in the software to get the frequency right. So I'll have to get the IDE going and... Uh, in the setup line, you can set up some compensation for the crystal frequency being off. But boy, boy, that really is far off. <laughs> it should be 14.03, so I guess we're close. And if we go over here and we look at the receiver, there we go. Big, solid uh, fundamental and some harmonics showing up. I mean, it is a square wave. That's exactly what I'd expect to see. But as you can see nice well-defined um, narrow clean signal exactly what I'd expect to see so lesson learned don't buy the cheap SI5351 boards so yeah the old adage you get what you pay for is, is true um, and and I'm sure that you know there's gonna be people going to the comments and going Chinese crap and you know just whatever we get it we know you know you're just wasting our time and your own time we get it um, and, uh, you know, those boards might actually require a different library. I think I mentioned that in the clips. But I do recall back years ago when I built the 630-meter uh, transmitter, I used one of these boards. And I recall vaguely that there was something about a different driver needed for a certain board supplier. And it could be that those cheap uh, boards from Elegoo simply need a different library in order to work. Uh, I did a little research, I did a little searching, um, 
I couldn't find, with you know, a couple of different Google searches, I couldn't find anybody talking about that. But I find it hard to believe that all three boards would be bad. I, I actually tried all three of them. And all three of them the same thing. No, uh, no solid, stable signal out of them and just a bunch of hash on the receiver. Uh, so, who knows? Um, <laughs> you know, that's a puzzle. Uh, I'll do some more research probably down the road because I've got three of those boards and if I can make them work, I'll, I'll, I can find a project to use them in. Uh, but as it stands, um, as I recommended on the schematic, buy either Adafruit or EtherKit. And uh, I would encourage you to buy Adafruit. Uh, Adafruit is a small company that supplies things like this for makers. And it's a company that's founded by a maker, uh, Lemore. She's, she's a maker. And she employs people from the maker community. Um, you know, so it's, it's a small company, but it's all makers that, just like us, like to tinker and put things together. So support uh, Adafruit. Buy your board from Adafruit if you're going to buy one of those uh, SI5351s. The one that I got from Adafruit works perfectly, and now I can move forward. <laughs> i tell you what, man. There was a couple of times over these last two weeks when I was ready to just to throw the whole thing in the trash. <laughs> I got so frustrated running around in circles just trying to figure out why I couldn't get a, a clean signal out of that board. And, you know, is it my breadboard? Is it the wiring? I redid things over and over and tried this and tried that and just got more and more frustrated. And so I would hate to, for somebody else to go through that frustration, so I'm making this video as a cautionary tale, as it says in the title. Don't buy the cheap stuff when it comes to the 5351. Now the Arduinos, um, the Nano clones, they're working okay for me. Uh, I, I have bought three of those, uh, again from Elegoo, and they're working fine. So you're probably safe with those. Um, but, you know, of course, if you want to buy the official Arduino Nano, then you're supporting the Arduino um, group. And uh, I actually should probably buy mine from there, too. But I have these, and they work, so I'm going to use them. But that's just me. So um, now that I've got a solid signal, finally, coming out of this thing, I can move forward with testing transformer designs, which <laughs> I've got uh, three different transformers I've wound that I need to put on there and... and see what kind of power transfer I get through to the load, uh, and then figure out which design is the one to go with, and then I'll be able to actually build the thing onto protoboards and get it on the air, which I'm really looking forward to. Right now, I just have the transmit path on the breadboard, just the uh, the Arduino, the 5351, the uh, 74 LS244, and I was fiddling around with the low-pass filter design there as well. You might have noticed that on the board, uh, but uh, uh, I need to get the... Uh, the coupling transformer solidified uh, and working and then I can build it onto protoboard and that'll be the the next video will be a build video now that I've got a signal I can move forward and uh, the next video will probably be a long one I'm going to try to set the cameras and lights up and uh, let you look over my shoulder while I'm building this thing onto a protoboard I haven't done that in a while I don't think I've done a video like that since I built the QCX and uh, some people have asked questions in the other com um, video comments about how to wind toroids and that. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that in the build video for sure. So I've got to get busy testing transformers and uh, get that finished up in the schematics, finished up on the blog right up with the right transformer. And then we'll build this thing onto a protoboard and actually get it on the air, which I have been wanting to do for so long. I can't wait to get it on the air. So we'll see you in that one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.